Hello, my name is Xenia. In this video, I will be talking about all the books I plan on reading in June. I was really surprised how many books I actually managed to finish from my list last month, which is super encouraging. And in this month, I plan on starting and finishing most of these books. So I'm being realistic here. I know I'm quite busy in the summer and I don't have as much time. So most of these books are short and manageable, hopefully. So I'm, first I'm continuing with Edith Wharton's books. I've read her Ethan Frome and House of Mirth, which are both pretty sad, very critical of society books and very psychologically deep, but I hope that this book is a little bit less tragic, at least from, that's what I'm expecting from it. It's called Summer. Summer, Edith wrote, Wharton wrote to Gilliard Lapsley, is known to its author with her familiars as The Hot Ethan, one of the first, first American novels to deal frankly with a young woman's sexual awakening it was a publishing sensation when it appeared in 1917, praised by Joseph Conrad, Percy Leboc, and favorably compared to Madame Bovary. Like its predecessor, Ethan Fromm, it is set in the Berkshires, but the season is summer, and the story is of Charity Royale, a New Englander. of humble origins, passionate, forthright, and proud, and her torrid affair with Lucius Harney, an artistically inclined young man from the city. A novel that breaks or stretches many conventions of women's romantic love stories, and in the process creates a new picture of female sexuality. Summer is a clamorous and ecstatic affirmation of the joy of sexual love, no matter what it costs. Bold in conception, rich in imagery, and provocative by implication, it was one of Edith Wharton's personal favorites and stands as one of her greatest novelistic achievements. Sounds really, really good and very fitting for the summer season. So next, I'm also continuing with the solitude list I compiled. You can check out one of my previous videos, Books on Solitude. It's by Thomas Merton, Thoughts in Solitude. I have read him before when I took a mystical Christianity course in college, and I really enjoyed him. So I hope this book will be as thought-provoking. He has a little bit of a religious connotation that I find not completely my thing because I'm more of a spiritual person who doesn't associate necessarily as a Christian, but there is a lot of wisdom in it and I think wisdom is non-denominational in any kind of way it's just deep and fulfilling to anybody who approaches it and I know I have a lot to learn from him and from his many years he spent in solitude developing his inner world processing his reactions to what he saw and writing it down in words so we can all benefit from it so the next book is My Antonia by Willa Cather. I have never read Willa Cather before and I know she's very famous for the spirit of pioneering. This is widely recognized as her greatest novel because it's a soulful and rich portrait of a pioneer woman's simple yet heroic life. The spirited daughter of bohemian immigrants, Antonia must adapt to a hard existence in a desolate prairies of the Midwest. Enduring childhood poverty, teenage seduction, and family tragedy, she eventually becomes a wife and mother on a Nebraska farm. A fictional record of how women helped forge the communities that formed a nation, My Antonia is also a hauntingly eloquent celebration of the strength, courage, and spirit of America's early pioneers. I actually started it yesterday and I got like 50 pages in. It's very scenic, like the setting is described in really rich detail that I appreciate. And I'm looking forward to, if I enjoy the rest of it as much or more than I enjoyed it yesterday, I know I'll probably read her again. 
have you read her before? If you like her, if you don't like her, I would love to hear from you. The next book is from a list I actually compiled after asking on one of the Facebook groups about what are some books all women should read. This was listed several times actually. It's called Gifts from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh. A modern day classic. Here are Anne Morrow Lindbergh's elegant and wise meditations on youth and age, love and marriage, solitude, peace and contentment as she set them down during a brief vacation by the sea. She helps us see ways to reconcile our most deeply personal needs with obligations to family, friends, lovers, and work, ways to separate loneliness from replenishing solitude, and ways to find solace in the simplest of daily tasks. Now more than ever, a gift from the sea serves as a spiritual compass guiding us toward inner tranquility in the face of life's deeper questions. Also wonderfully short, sounds like a very good summer read to me, set in the ocean. Though I, the ocean is not really my favorite place, I much prefer the forest and the coolness of it and the richness and the sounds of the birds and everything. But I enjoy reading about it in book form. So the poetry book that I plan on reading is Sonnets from the Portuguese by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is actually a very old, like, vintage edition that has these beautiful illustrations that look like wood blocks or lino cuts. And I used to do lino cuts, so I find these really, really compelling and beautiful in, the de in their detailing. You can see the, even their little, like, features in there. I also started this yesterday. She's not modest, though. She compares herself to Shakespeare. In, in the introduction, there's a quote from a letter she wrote. And she's like, she thinks these sonnets are the best after Shakespeare. That takes a lot of um, belief in yourself to claim such a thing. But hopefully she lives up to it. So next I have The Summer Book by Tove Jansen. This is a Swedish author. It's a, a translation. And... It's about an elderly artist and her six-year-old granddaughter who, on a summer together on a tiny island in the Gulf of Finland, gradually the two learn to adjust to each other's fears, whims, and yearnings for independence. And a fierce, fierce, understated love emerges, one that encompasses not only the summer inhabitants, but the island itself with its mossy rocks, windswept firs, and unpredictable seas. I read the introduction already, and it sounds like the sense of place, the setting, will be very, very beautiful. And I really love that in novels, when I can feel that the characters are really connected and rooted in their place. And the author, she actually had a little island somewhere, and it's based off basically her mom and her daughter. So I thought that was really, or not her daughter, her niece yeah her niece so when you do it from life when you interpret what you see in life in fictional form i think there's always another layer of richness to it unless you're just completely brilliant and 100 percent imagine characters from your head which i rarely believe is the case let me know your thoughts on that <laughs> do you like knowing the background to any of the books you read do you like thinking about the author's background that led them to write that specific story was there a little incident that happened that was very similar to that i personally love it i think that all books are a way for authors to find answers to questions they're asking and to themes they need to explore to find answers so personal stories usually fuel that and then they explore them in the writing, and I love hearing about both. So that's why I like personal narrative, essays, and many other kinds of literature like that. So the last book I'm planning on reading is Woman and Anxiety. It's a self-help classic. One of my 
closest pen pals. She sent this to me as a gift. And I thought it was <laughs> so, so sweet that she knew me enough to know that I do suffer from anxiety. I suffer from just being, feeling overwhelmed, especially in cities when there's just so much sensory overload. And hopefully this book will help me become a little bit more at ease in cities, surrounded by people, not in solitude, <laughs> is my most comfortable state. And I'll be able to appreciate more aspects of life without my anxiety. So this I do plan on reading in several, several months because it is a bit dry, I, I assume, just because a lot of research went into it. It's, it's about, you know, techniques and tips to try out. So yeah, this is my last book. And I'll also be finishing the Real K book. Hopefully, it has a lot of wise advice and letters on life. I love writing, reading letters in general. I will be probably doing a separate video on books on letters. So if you like this video, please click like, subscribe, let me know what you think. And I'll be checking up on you once a week, hopefully from now on, since I'm back home and I have more time. Until next time, thank you. Bye.